I think that it's easy to approach this kind of a system as cost savings. But in reality, it's much more than that. It's not just cost savings, but it's getting a system that does more things and does those things better than proprietary systems like B&G. I'm Holly, that's Ray, and this is our home, Sabado. Subscribe to Tag Along on the Adventure. It's an exceptionally gorgeous morning here in Grenada. Hurricane season is coming to an end and I'm excited to get moving again, but we've really enjoyed our time here. So I think it's gonna be a little bit sad to leave. Okay, I have got to get in this water. There's not very much to see down here, but Sabda looks pretty. Ray just juiced a bunch of limes and we bought a couple of coconuts from the boat boys. We don't have a machete on board, but we do have power tools. <laughs> This rain came out of nowhere. It's actually beautiful with the sun like that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> our last video about the nav desk setup got a lot of questions. Do you mind if I throw some at you? Uh, sure. For starters, what hardware did you use? For the monitoring system, the hardware is a Raspberry Pi and it works pretty good. You have to make sure that you use a 64-bit version of the operating system, otherwise it'll slow down after a while. There are some other options uh, that I'm sort of toying with. One of them is um, is an orange pie, which is more powerful. It's a good system. It's super small. It's a single board computer. It runs on five volts, so it's very power efficient. And I could have run all of that software off of the larger desktop computer. Uh, I call it larger. It's still really small. But I wanted to keep it separate so that, you know, if we leave the boat for an extended period of time, we can shut the big system down and we can keep that smaller monitoring system running. And then we still can get to all of our remote uh, systems on, on the boat. So yeah, that one's the, the Raspberry Pi that does the monitoring and the recording of the data. And then we have uh, what's called a NUC computer. It's a really small uh, computer, but it's pretty powerful. And that is what we use to run the touch screen, the open CPN, and the, uh, the, the really the monitor, the display for the monitoring system is, is run on that. And that one, it's a much more powerful system, but it still runs on 12 volt. That was really important for us. We didn't want to run any of this stuff through the inverter. And so you have to be really careful when you're ordering these PCs they mostly will say that they take 19 volts to run but a lot of them will accept 12 volts and will still run but then some require 19 so you have to be careful when you're ordering those that you're getting the right one so that's sort of high level hardware right um it's a million degrees in here i think the rain has stopped do you want to sit out on the bow yeah let's go outside yeah last bit of rainbow
So what sends the refrigeration temperatures, propane, and fuel levels? The temperature, well, it's all sent through Bluetooth. Uh, the temperature is uh, rubies, little round temperature, uh, humidity uh, sensors. And then the ones for the propane tanks are called Mopeka. They can connect to the Raspberry Pi, but I have them all connecting to the Victron Serbo. And just so that can gather all the information, it just makes it a little bit easier to have all in one place because that also uh, has our fuel tank and water tanks uh, going into it and tracking it. So in theory with this system, would you even need a chart plotter? No, you, you could get away. I mean, we have friends that just sailed around the world and use an iPad, the same iPad for the entire trip. So you don't, you wouldn't need a chart plotter. There are some things, for example, I think you would need some sort of manufacturer's system to do the commissioning of your autopilot. Right. But for the most part, no, you could, you could use a tablet. You could use a touch screen at the helm. I, I don't think I would do it as my primary system, mainly because the screens are so nice on the latest models of multifunction devices from B&G and, and Raymarine and Furuno. But you could, and, and we have it set up to where if something happened to our chart plotter, our entire system at the helm, we could still control everything through the nav desk, a laptop, or any of our phones and iPads. So what can it not do? I know in our video you showed the radar overlay. Is there anything that would allow it to do anti-collision sonar or exterior camera so, feeds? Yes, there are, there are things that it can't do as easily or as integrated as uh, a, a multifunction device at the helm. So with the B&G system, for example, I can click on, I can, <laughs> I can click on the AIS symbol and directly call it through the VHF. Have I ever done that? No, I've never done it, but you can do it. With the multifunction devices, you can have uh, cameras built into it. You can do that on your iPads as well, or your, your, your computer systems. Just, it just doesn't integrate as well. Now, but there are things that you can do with the OpenCPN and, and other software that we're using that isn't as easy on uh, the multifunction devices. And that really, that's monitoring all of your electrical systems, your engine details, super easy to do satellite map overlays. Um, and you're also, you're not locked into a certain manufacturer's charts. You can use a lot of different charts. Once you get the system up and going, and that, that's probably another downside to the system that we're using it does take a lot of time. We've been working on it for two years. You know, we're helping other people do it. And we've also realized that there are people that want to do it themselves, just need a little push in that direction. So we, we've started describing our system, doing uh, network diagrams, detailing the software and the settings, and we're uploading that to the Patreon site. And we'll keep doing that. We're really starting at high level information and drilling down into all the details. And I feel like that's a good way to get, to help people get a, a head start and start going down that path and then you know, make ourselves available to help once they start doing that. I think that it's easy to approach this kind of a system as cost savings, but in reality, it's much more than that. It's, it's not just cost savings, but it's getting a system that does more things and does those things better than proprietary systems like B&G and Raymarine and Furuno. Now those systems have their place and we're going to continue using it as our main navigation system. 
but there are things that we can do better with this free software. And so we're just going to keep exploring that. And I definitely encourage other people to give it a try. It doesn't take any money and just a small amount of time to download it and install it. It'll run on your Windows computer, your Mac computer, and Linux. Just do it. All right, I've been experimenting with homemade no-churn ice cream. This one is so good and it's only three ingredients. Vanilla ice cream with passion fruit on top is incredible. Don't knock it till you try it. Doesn't get better than that.